Our next section is skin infections. Now, we already saw part of skin infections. You could see it simultaneously here in dermatology as part of it, and also in the infectious disease section. So there is some overlap in those. Now, if we look in the skin infections, the most important thing diagrammatically is for us to understand what the different levels is inside the skin. See, uh, skin infections are difficult because the terminology is difficult. For instance, impetigo, erysipelas, cellulitis, folliculitis for your uncles and carbuncles, necrotizing fasciitis are seven different types of skin infection. Now, this is a little bit like studying a foreign language because you're basically learning a bunch of terminology, say, what does that mean? Impetigo, erysipelas, cellulitis, folliculitis, furuncles, carbuncles, necrotizing fasciitis, staph scalded skin syndrome. Whew, painful, huh? Painful. Well, what we see here is that this is our friend, the hair. And what happens is that in the epidermis, in the epidermis here, we have in the epidermis, we have superficial fungal infections and superficial skin infections in the epidermis. Now, something that goes down a little bit deeper, and because it's got the dermal lymphatics, it's extremely bright red. That's why we've done it in red, the dermis. When infections go into the dermis here, the epidermis and the dermis, that's erysipelas. And erysipelas is extremely bright, red, hot, warm, bright, red, hot, warm, tender, bright, red, hot, warm, and tender, with erysipelas. Erysipelas, bright, red, hot, warm, and tender. Now, erysipelas with bright, red, hot, warm, and tender is because it involves these epidermal, these dermal lymphatic channels. Now, the most superficial of all the bacterial skin infections pardon me, is impetigo, and impetigo is almost exclusively an infection of just the epidermis. And that's why impetigo can cause weeping and crusting and oozing and draining. It just lifts up the epidermis and sloughs it off in a slide of, uh, in, in people who have staph and strep lifting up the epidermis. And you'll see the words weepy, crusting, oozing, draining, honey-colored, weepy, crusty, oozy. Now, the deepest of all the bacterial skin infections goes all the way down into the dermis and the dermis and the subcutaneous, subcutaneous tissues. Into those subcutaneous tissues, okay? Into those subcutaneous tissues. Now, into those subcutaneous tissues is cellulitis. That's the deepest. Now, it's because cellulitis is so deep underneath the skin, because cellulitis is so deep underneath that skin, it can't weep and crust and ooze and drain. It's underneath the dermal epidermal junction. It doesn't get up there. Cellulitis is deep, staph and strep. Erysipelas, a little more superficial. Bright, red, hot, hot, warm. Strep. When we say strep, which strep do we mean? Viridins? No, viridins only causes one disease. Viridins group strep is a one disease organism. Viridins group strep, when it occurs, only causes endocarditis. It's a one disease drug, endocarditis. Chick comes in with fever and uh, strep viridins in the blood, get an echo. Chick comes in with a fever and strep viridins in the blood, get an echo. Why? It's a one disease drug. It's a one disease, pardon me, organism. It's a one disease organism. Strep viridins in the blood, get an echo. The strep that we mean in the skin is group A beta hemolytic strep. Group A beta hemolytic strep. And group A beta hemolytic strep basically means that we have a form of strep that is strep pyogenes. Can you get glomerulonephritis from the strep infections of the skin? Yes. Can you get endocarditis and rheumatic fever? No. Rheumatic fever? Heart? No. Kidney, yes. Only the strains that are in the throat go to the heart. Erysipelas, group A beta hemolytic strep, strep pyogenes. The staph that causes skin infections. Staph on skin infections. Staph aureus or staph epidermidis? And the answer is staph aureus. Staph aureus. Staph epidermidis lives there. Staph epidermidis lives there. 
Now, because impetigo is very superficial and on top, you can treat it with topicals. Bacitracin or mupirocin. Bacitracin or mupirocin. Bacitracin and mupirocin, also known as Bactroban. Topicals. Weepy, crusty, oozy, and drainy, use a topical antibiotic. Bacitracin, mupirocin. Now, in general for skin infections, the therapies are oxacillin and cloxacillin, dicloxacillin and nafacillin, ox, clox, diclox and naf, ox, clox, diclox and naf. When do we use methicillin? Never, unless somebody says, I like to pee eosinophils. How about you? Eosinophils in the urine. If somebody likes allergic interstitial nephritis, that's the only time to use methicillin. Methicillin is a straight shot into renal failure. Matter of fact, methicillin is no longer manufactured. Whenever we say methicillin, we mean ox, clox, dicloxin, and naf, ox, clox, dicloxin, and naf. If you have a rash to the penicillin drugs, you can use first generation cephalosporins like cefazolin and cephalexin. Like cefazolin and cephalexin. You can use these staphylococcal drugs. Imbitigo, topical. Weeping, crusting, oozing, draining. Weepy, crusty, oozy, and draining. Dermis, dermis, erysipelas, hot, red, warm, swollen. Subcutaneous tissues, cellulitis. Mupirocin, topicals. Now, we said that the little guy going underneath the skin, he's digging underneath your skin, he's digging and he's pooping, and he's digging and he's pooping, he's digging and he's pooping. You gotta scrape out that little bug and that scrape, you gotta scrape out that organism, scrape out that bug, scrape out that bug, and you scrape out that bug, and who do you scrape? You scrapey the scabie. You scrapey the scabie. You scrape the scabies. Scrapies? No scabies. Who do you scrape out? You scrape out the scabies. Okay? And the big guy near the hair, the big guy near the hair, Waving, oh, he, 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 is crabs or pediculosis. Crabs or pediculosis. Now, crabs or pediculosis, crabs or pediculosis are on the surface. Scabies has to be scraped out. Which one of these itches? Scabies. Which one is burrows, scabies. Which one is web spaces, scabies. Which one of these that you, do you like to eat fried with a little bit of lemon butter, a little breaded, you know what I mean, glass of white wine? Crabs, crabs, crabs. Particularly when the shell is so soft. Ooh, so tender, so nice, mm, mm, so tasty. That's why there's no kosher shellfish because those things are big insects. Let me tell you something. They are big insects. Crabs, pediculosis lice, scabies, burrows, scabies, itching, scabies, web spaces. Treatment for both of them, permethrin. Permethrin. Now, the next section of this is superficial fungal infections. Now, as long as there's no hair and no nails involved, you can use any topical you want as long as there's no hair and nails involved. If there's hair and nails involved, you can't use a topical. Clotrimazole, ketoconazole, econazole, myconazole, any conazole you want. As long as there's no hair and nails involved, you can use any topical you want. Once there's hair and nails involved, no topical. Once there's hair and nails involved, no topical, okay? Once, yes, there's nails and hair involved. Yes to the nails, yes to the hair, yes to the nails, yes to the hair, then it's terbinafine or itraconazole. Why not terbinafine? I don't know, terbinafine or itraconazole because this is the systemic therapy that's best. In adults, remember, greasy fulvin is the answer to nothing. Greasy fulvin is the answer to nothing. 
We never use greasy oil fulvin in adults. If there's no hair and nails, any topical you want. Clotrimazole, ketoconazole, econazole, turconazole, myconazole, nystat and cyclopyrox, any topical. As long as there's no hair and nails involved. Nails and hair need terbinafine or itraconazole. Let's look at some of our pictures of these skin infections. Now, impetigo, superficial, weeping, crusting. You notice that the epidermis is removed. Why isn't this staph scalded skin? Because staph scalded skin is a toxin removing the skin in the sheet. This is much more weepy, crusty, and oozy. Topical mupirocin, bacitracin. Impetigo. Superficial, bullous impetigo, staph aureus, making bullous disease. What's the difference between a vesicle and a bulla? The difference between a vesicle and a bulla is size. When it's small, it's a vesicle. When it's big, it's a bulla, big a bulla, big a bulla, small vesicle. Erysipelas. How do I know this isn't the malar rash of lupus? Well, the malar rash of lupus is not going to look quite this bright and red. And the other thing is that the malar rash of lupus does not affect the nose like this. This is erysipelas. Now remember, erysipeloid is a finger infection in fishermen. Erysipeloid is a very oddball disease called erysipelothrix rusiopathiae. Ooh, boy, I bet you're sorry about that. Erysipelothrix rusiopathiae. Ooh, my God. Uh, I try to make it never a habit never to learn any disease with the names of more than seven syllables. So the thing is, erysipeloid, you could probably pass without needing to know that, for sure. But erysipelas is a strep infection of the skin. Group A, beta hemolytic strep. You see how it's bright and red and hot and warm? That's because it's in the dermal lymphatics. Cellulitis. No weeping, no crusting, just swelling under the skin. Staph and strep, staph aureus. Ox, clox, diclox, and naph. Necrotizing fasciitis means the skin is coming off in a sheet. Now, the biggest thing about the, trans, the necrotizing fasciitis is that necrotizing fasciitis is predominantly a surgical disease. It is treated with surgical debridement and antibiotics. You ready? Necrotizing fasciitis, if you do surgery alone, you can live. If you do antibiotics alone, you'll probably die. Necrotizing fasciitis needs to get the dead fascia removed and air onto those organisms to breed out the organism. Is it good to give antibiotics? For sure, but it's better to do debridement. Necrotizing fasciitis. The fascia is this plane up here in the subcutaneous tissues, dissecting through and skinning you alive. S the s toxins dissecting the tissue planes. Tinea corporis, tinea of the body. You scrape with a potassium hydroxide is the best initial test. You see the heaped up edge here? That's where the greatest amount of organisms are. What's the best initial test? Potassium hydroxide. What's the most accurate test? Fungal culture. What's the best initial test? Potassium hydroxide. What's the most accurate test? A fungal culture. What's the best initial test? Potassium hydroxide. What's the most accurate test? A fungal culture. Topical antifungal medications. Tinea is the same as saying dermatophyte. Tinea and dermatophyte are the same thing as saying superficial fungal infection. Why do we have three names? In order to keep you stupid. You think we want you to know everything? No way, we want you to be stupid. Because if I, as a medical school faculty member, have you be knowledgeable, then you don't need me. So I would be really appreciated if everybody in this tape right now, out there now, if you would please stay stupid and ignorant, then all of us medical school faculty members can feel more important. If you know everything I know, what? Then I'm irrelevant. Oops, too late. Next one. Bet's the best initial test for dermatophyte. Ah, potassium hydroxide. A potassium hydroxide. See this? All this stuff that looks like wildlife there? Because that's all fungal. That's all fungal hyphae under there. Potassium hydroxide is the best initial test. Fungal culture is the most accurate test. Tinea pedis and tinea and name the part of my body. KOH, fungal culture. KOH, fungal culture. Any topical antibiotics you want. It's warm. It's dark. It's wet. It's a fertile place for fungus. It's warm, it's dark, it's wet. It likes to be uh, cultivating fungal farm in your toes. Let's go fungus farming. What do you do? I raise mushrooms. 
Where do you raise them? In between your toes. It's warm, it's dark, it's wet, it's moist, it's comfy. Any topical antifungal and keep it dry. Our next slide shows Tinea unguum. Now, unguum, it could have been called onychomycosis. Unguum means nail, onycho means nail, onychomycosis, like paronychia, near the nail, paronychia, near the nail. Tinea unguum means a nail fungal infection. Paronychia means a bacterial infection around the nail. Tinea unguum, fungal infection around the nail. Fungal infection around the nail. Potassium hydroxide is the best initial test. You'll see this. Fungal culture is the most accurate test. And remember, terbinafine or itraconazole. What's the most common adverse effect of terbinafine? It is the liver, the liver. The other thing is this, they ask you what organ and you can't remember, say the liver. Tinea capitis, potassium hydroxide fungal culture. Tinea barbi, ah, barber's itch, barbie, barber's itch. Oh, look at this. Uh, I'm in my Barbie world and with my Barbie curls. Why don't you scrape me and then eliminate me? Look at this. Scrape that tinea Barbie and give fungal antifungals. Okay? It is basically around the hair follicles that you have the fungus accumulating. I keep saying the same thing over again because it's tinea and named a part of my body. Barbie, capitis, unguum, pedis, corpus. It's all the same answers. KOH fungal culture, KOH fungal culture, KOH fungal culture, KOH fungal culture, KOH fungal culture. And anti antifungal you want as long as there's no veils involved. And you say, what's the difference between candidiasis and those uh, dermatophytes? Dermatophytes occur where it is dry. Candidiasis, you see this intertriginous cheese zone here? Well, candida only happens when it's wet. The other thing is, look in that carpet, look at those ceiling tiles, fungus! But they exist as spores. Do you ever wonder what's the difference between a fungus and a yeast? Well, a fungus is the group term, fungus. Fungus can be molds, fungus can be yeasts. Now, yeast is things like candida. Candida only exists in the warm, moist body temperature. Candida only exists in the warm, moist body temperature of the human body or where it's warm and moist and wet and dark. In other words, there is no candida above those ceiling tiles. There is no candida on this countertop. There is no candida outside in the environment. Candida exists in human body environments. It grows where it's in its human host. Comfortable, warm. Molds, on the other hand, molds have spores. And those spores can exist in the environment. And then they become germinated and they grow when you get at 37 degrees centigrade, which is human body temperature, and they germinate inside of you. Now, in general, that doesn't happen because you have an immune system that picks them off. But sometimes, if you're neutropenic, you get aspergillus. Sometimes, if it's overwhelming, histo, blasto, coccidioidomycosis. But this, look at this diaper itch. That's because it's warm, moist, wet. Warm, moist, wet. Warm, moist, and wet. Warm, moist, and wet. Warm, moist, and wet. Candida topical antifungal and keep it dry. Candida inside the mouth, warm, moist, and wet. You see this white plaque? How do you know that that white plaque there is not pharyngitis? Because it's happening on the buccal surface. It's not happening in the pharynx. It's not happening far enough back. How do we know it's not hairy leukoplakia? Oral hairy leukoplakia. How do we know it's not oral hairy leukoplakia? You'll like that. White plaques. White plaques. How do you know it's not oral hairy leukoplakia? That's from Epstein-Barr virus. That's associated with HIV. And the biggest thing about it is oral hairy leukoplakia does not scrape off. This will scrape off. Thrush scrapes off. 
Oral hairy pollicle plachia only scrapes off if you take the flesh with it and it bleeds. This is like fungal vaginitis of your mouth. That's why Mycelex troches, which we use for oral candidiasis, do you know what a Mycelex or clotrimazole troche? Troche was really a vaginal tablet that we used in the mouth when HIV came around. Vulval vaginal candidiasis, thrush, these two diseases are fundamentally the same. Looks like a fungus, scrapes off topical antifungal or oral fluconazole. Topical antifungal or oral fluconazole. Fluconazole works for superficial fungi and yeasts. Amphotericin works for anything severe. Anything that's in the heart and the lung, uh, the blood and the heart and the blood and the brain. The heart and the blood and the brain, the heart, the blood and the brain. Endocarditis, bloodstream fungal infections, meningitis. But not for thrush and vaginal candidiasis. What's the most common adverse effect of amphotericin? And the answer is hypokalemia and acidosis and renal. Everybody on amphotericin develops a renal tubular acidosis, a distal renal tubular acidosis and renal failure. Amphotericin is only for severe life-threatening infections. Fluconazole can be for life-threatening things like neutropenic fever, but fluconazole can also be for simple things like vulvovaginal candidiasis, topical antifungals or vulvovaginal candidiasis. Parenechia, that is a bacterial infection around or near, par, around, near the nail, around the nail, paronychia. Tinea versicolor, hey, look at the many strange colors. You see the many strange colors? It's sort of like versatile colors, versatile colors, multiple colors. Tinea versicolor is also known as pterosporon or biculari. Oh, it's a long word. Pterosporon. Hey, only five syllables. Orbiculare. Oops, that makes nine. Krapsky. Well, how about the simpler name? Malassezia furfur. Seven. Malassezia. Malassezia furfur. It's kind of nice. It's like a pet. What's this? Is that a, uh, a lasso opso? Is it a collie? No, it's my new dog, the Malassezia furfur. So the thing of Malassezia furfur, or Pterosporon orbiculari, isn't that exciting? I could be saying almost anything. Well, that's the causative organism of Tinea versicolor. Now let's see, hmm, let's look at this. Tinea corporis, KOH culture, topical antifungal. KOH culture, Tinea pedis, and topical antifungal. Oh, TOH culture, topical antifungal. KOH culture, topical antifungal. Let me think, Tinea versicolor. Mm. Could that be KOH, fungal culture, and topical antifungal? Yes, but we have something unique for Tinea versicolor. Something unique for Tinea versicolor, something unique for Tinea versicolor, is that Tinea versicolor is treated also with topical antifungals. Topical antifungals, but selenium sulfide. Selenium sulfide. Selenium sulfide. Selenium sulfide, which is a topical antifungal. It's also known as Selsun Blue, not that I work for drug companies. But the point is, selenium sulfide is a dandruff drug because dandruff, also known as seborrheic dermatitis, is a hypersensitivity reaction to a superficial fungal infection called pterosporin orbiculare. That's what dandruff is. So you could use a steroid to decrease the hypersensitivity reaction, or you can use a topical antifungal. Why would we on the skin use selenium sulfide? Because when you have a full square meter or body surface area to cover, and you're trying to use something in a little tube, you're going to end up using a little tube every two days. Selenium sulfide just call, covers. It's like, what's the difference between painting that wall with a brush and using a roller? Faster covers more surface area. Just faster and covers more surface area. Selenium sulfide with Vertinia versicolor. 
The other thing about Tinea Versicolor is on the scraping, on the KOH, it uses the word spaghetti and meatballs. Now, the most important thing about spaghetti is whether you can spell it. Spaghetti and meatballs. And spaghetti and meatballs pattern is because this is the hyphae. The, the hyphae are a little bit unique. It has these little pellets and spores coming off of it, so it looks a little like spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and meatballs. Tinea versi color. Tinea versicolor, wood lamp. A wood lamp? Well, uh, we're looking at wood? Looking for wood. No, wood's lamp is a fancy name for an ultraviolet light. Did you know that Tinea versicolor fluoresces under ultraviolet light, under blue light? The blue UV light is called the wood's lamp. And that is looking for the fluorescence of Tinea versicolor. Strange colors. Strange colors visible here with Tinea Versi color. Strange colors. Wood's lamp. Blue turning to yellow. Another way to make the diagnosis. Scabies. Well, I could tell you there's anything I want in that uh, web space. Scabies, web spaces, web spaces, web spaces. Scrape it and give me some permethrin. Oh, why are we showing you a crotch? because scabies is often a sexually transmitted disease. How do we get it from crotch to crotch? From sexually transmitted disease. It leaps. Scabies, there's the guy, gets his hooks in you. You scrape them out and you give topical drugs, pardon me, called permethrin, sarcoptus scabii, from the word where we get the word a scarab from, which the Egyptians used to remove the flesh from bodies, a scarab, permethrin. Uh-oh, head lice. I don't like that guy. He's ugly. Well, the answer is permethrin. Superficial, near the hair, and permethrin. Now, warts. This is another form of wart. You see the umbilication in the center? There's a little dot in the center. So molluscum contagiosum. Now, like all warts, molluscum contagiosum is diagnosed by how it looks. But the other thing is this. You see, molluscum contagiosum has, as a wart, a little umbilication at the top. A little umbilication. Molluscum contagiosum has a little umbilication. Molluscum contagiosum. And you treat the molluscum contagiosum by just removing it. You can freeze it with cryotherapy. You can burn it. You can use layer, laser. You can cut it off. Electrocautery. You can use imiquimod, and imiquimod is a local immunostimulant that tells your body's T cells that it's time to reject this molluscum as a foreign body and it sloughs off. Molluscum contagiosum. As the word implies, molluscum contagiosum can be contagious and spread person to person. There's also a significant association of molluscum contagiosum with HIV. Now, that brings an end to skin infections. There's also more inside your dermatology section. Now, in terms of the skin infections, remember, we said the same thing over and over, KOH and a culture, KOH and a culture, with the exception of Tinea Versicolor, which has a woods lamp and a spaghetti and meatball pattern. Skin infections, what could be more basic? See you in the next section.